Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Danny and once again I am here with Dr. Suzanne Lee and the Arcturians and today we are going to be talking about all of this full moon energy. My question to the Arcturians would be what is this looking like from a galactic perspective? Well the very first thing that I got uh, of the Arcturians is that um, that there is a a clearing and it's a clearing of consciousness a clearing of consciousness and all over the world people are as one person having the same experience of something that no one ever thought in all of their greatest imagination would ever happen, and it did. And what is happening is that we are sheltered in place, either by ourselves, which is a huge challenge, and or by with your family, which could also be a huge challenge. And either way, we are in a situation where we're learning about intense intimacy. Intimacy with our self, intimacy with the people that we live with, and intimacy with our planet that somehow got very sick. And it's, that's really sad. And so on the one hand, we're feeling sad, but we're happy that we can be safe, but we all want to know why, how, what happened. Thank you for adding that sense of intimacy. That is something that I haven't heard talked about with this full moon energy and how raw intimacy can be because that is putting everything that was in the dark, everything that was hidden, out into the light and that's yeah. a challenge so my question for the Arcturians would be what is a helpful way for uh, people to be grounding down this energy to feel safer while they are clearing and while they are getting more intimate with themselves and the planet we'd like the word intimacy and so many people didn't remember about intimacy and forgot about intimacy and just did whatever. But now we have intimacy. We are very intimate with anybody that we share the home with. And if we're home alone, we're very intimate with ourselves. Every thought is going to feel like a scream and within this now there's so many inner challenges these are inner challenges this isn't a challenge that we can go off to war or even go off and uh, have a big parade that says no or says yes no we each need to go inside of ourselves and communicate with ourselves and communicate with whatever people we can communicate and use your phone you know go on the internet go on the youtube go whatever you can wherever you can go so that you don't feel too lonely and along with that think about the earth what did we do to the earth it, why is this happening you no know, this virus it just came and it's gone all over the world so danny what do you have to say about that i don't want to get too emotional because i i get very emotional about that it's a very, very emotional thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Any 
anything in particular or any time that we are clearing out anything in our lives, it's emotional, it's challenging, and our thoughts and our emotions are very much connected together. And when we take something like the uncertainty that many of us are facing right now in so many different ways. If we take that element of being in the unknown and combine it with the clearing on a personal and collective level, that can be a lot, but it can also be very reassuring and very settling because that is a beautiful example of becoming who you truly are and that includes the planet itself and that is letting what is within you shine brighter than what darkness was trying to keep that inner light down and that's what these clearings are doing it's allowing more light in and in order to bring in more light you have to let go of what is no longer serving you in the process and my next question to the Arcturians would be, how are we seeing that idea of letting go and releasing happening with Gaia now? Oh, Gaia is very happy. But Gaia is blooming and she's sorry that things are so difficult for her humans, but she does realize it's her turn. And uh, humans have ignored her a lot and have forgotten to take care of her a lot and done damage to her a lot. And now the humans are all on lockdown. And Guy is like, Yahoo! <laughs> She's just like having a ball. <laughs> and she loves her humans. Guy loves her humans. But they needed to take some time to really look deeply into themselves because too many humans forgot that without a planet, where would they be? You know, if the planet became uninhabitable, where would they go? Mars, a little hot, you know, the other planets real cold, not a place that a human could live. This is this one planet that we know about that humans can live in. And we are obliged, we volunteered, we promised we would take care of our planet. Well, a lot of people have, but something went wrong somewhere. But we live in a country I look out, the birds are flying, the trees are blowing, the grass is moving, the clear, the sky is clear. It's nature is happy as a bug in a rug. Nature is extremely happy. And it's nature's turn. Don't you think it's nature's turn? But we want it to be that nature and humans are on the same term. But that has not really been the picture too much, has it? Hmm. No. no, it hasn't been. And this is the wake up call for every single human being. This is a wake up call. This is our planet. Would we just throw a bunch of junk on the living room floor and spill coffee and step on top of it and, um, never mow our lawns and never wash our windows. Would we do that? No, of course not. It's our home. So we want to keep it nice. You want to keep it clean. You want to keep it comfortable. We pay all the right bills so we get the gas and the electricity and the water. You know, we take care of it. So it's not that humans don't know how to take care of it. It's just they haven't really thought of the planet being an alive being. Why don't you, I have the feeling that you've got some good stuff to say on that, but so I'm gonna let you take the, I'm gonna let you jump in now. Uh -huh. Sure, thank you for, for opening up that uh, perspective of, yes, the planet is alive. And 
just like us being the live beings that we are and we're experiencing these energies of the full moon and realistically of just the air that we're in the planet is experiencing the same thing too so we're the trees the plants the animals but differently now us being humans and focused more on our survival and third dimensional activities we aren't focused on how other life is responding to the energies of our universe because what happens is we, we're not even sometimes aware that we ourselves are being affected by the different energies around us and sometimes quote unquote far away from us so how can we open our perceptual fields enough to understand what is happening when we start to experience these energies and how can we get more comfortable with that? Well, we the Arcturians would say that opening up your heart chakra opens up your perceptual field of what you love and what you want to love and what you care for and what you cherish. And when you think in terms of your first chakra, you know, that's like, this is the land that I have walked on all my life. I learned to walk on this planet. This is the planet that I learned to walk on. This is the planet that I learned to ride my bike on. This is the planet I learned to play tennis on. This is the planet that I went to the beach on. And we can't do any of those things now. What happened? What happened? All those wonderful things that we loved, we lost them. What happened? Now we're going to take a moment and ask each of you to without any judgment against anyone else, or definitely not against yourself. But just having that moment, what that means to you. Because we want to know from all of you, we want to know how, I would say Suli, and I would say for the Galactics, is that humanity forgot about the one they forgot that we are all one. We are all one with the planet, and we are all one with each other. And we got separate. And then guess what? We're all separated. Isn't that interesting? We're all separated. And even if you're with your family, you're gonna to want to separate once in a while because 24 seven, 24 seven, you know, people are gonna learn how to be separate even in their homes once in a while. And it's that uh, unity consciousness and the uh, advancement of what learns from going within their own self but the lack of separation is the ability to share with others what they found when they went into their own self. Wow, how do I feel about this? I want to really think a long moment. I want to write this down about how I feel about this. I'm, I'm going to share it with a bunch of friends. I'm going to put it on the internet or I'm going, I'm going to share it because we need to come together. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for bringing back that element of intimacy back into sharing. Because again, you can't hold anything in the darkness if you are becoming or remembering that you are this being of light. And embracing that requires release. And that is what we are experiencing in this now. So my next question to the Arcturians is on the same, on the same topic, of holding into that heart chakra to open up the perceptual fields to what is occurring and what these energies are, how we are reacting to these energies. How is the planet doing this? How is this happening on a planetary level for Gaia? We would say that Gaia is pretty happy. 
she is nature. She's nature. Uh, there's not a lot of traffic. There's not a lot of noise. There's uh, not a lot of people swimming in her beaches. There's not a lot of people hiking all over her hills. And she loves to share her planetary body with the humans. Sometimes the humans get a little over the top and do it too much and too often and, and too roughly. And so she's kind of enjoying this break. Uh, she, the sun still rises, the moon still rises, uh, there's still rain, there's still sun. In other words, nature is very happy. It's just the humans that are having their problem, which is quite a flip because before, um, the humans were happy, but they were happy riding their dirt bikes all over the place and throwing trash around and, and doing all kinds of things that weren't good for Gaia. And so now Gaia gets a chance to really clean herself up. And she enjoys that. Yes. And go Gaia. Go, go Gaia. Gaia. And yeah, the best go way girl. we can <laughs> go girl, you go girl. <laughs> um, yes. Thank you for for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And I think it is really beautiful to see all of those videos about how many different kinds of animals are coming out into the city and the canals in Italy and how the yeah. air pollution has decreased more than it ever has in this kind of time frame that we have ever seen in our history. Yeah. I think it is so incredible to witness. And my final question to for the Arcturians, is this a break or can we call this the beginning of the beginning? Well, the first thing is it's Gaia's turn. And humanity has to know that Gaia is their mother and they need to take care of her. And when they take care of her, she can flourish. And if the planet flourishes, then the people can flourish because there's enough food, there's enough light, there's enough rain, and um, there's time for fun, and there's time for relaxation. And you can go outside and, and do all the things that we used to be able to do that can't be done now. And we got sent to our rooms. Yeah. And when we're in our rooms, we're going to really go inside ourselves. And it's going to really reflect on how much we love our planet. And not everybody that is, quote, quote, unquote, in their room has, you know, many of those are people that have really worked hard for Gaia. But they're taking this time where they're not going to work, et cetera, et cetera, and having this time. They're going to be able to write more things and talk to their friends and drive some, draw some wonderful pictures and... Uh, and share and what would we would like to say is please share your experience with others because then you are not alone even if you're the a lonely one in your house and there's no one else in your house and there's no one else that's going to be in your house you have a phone you have an internet uh, you can find other things to do there's so many things that you can do and so many ways you can communicate. And please do, please do communicate. And what we would like to say in closing is if you can all send beloved Gaia your love. If you can all wake up in the morning and stand tall and put your hands up in the sky and say, Gaia, 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 we are sending down, we are pulling down all the love, all the light, and all the healing that is necessary within this time. And from our place in our human vessels that are standing on your beloved ground or near your water, 
most people there, they don't even get to be on the ground that much and they don't get to be in the water that much. And wow, are people really going to appreciate it when it all comes back? And please, when it all comes back, and it will someday, somehow, it will all come back. Please remember what happened when we forgot to take care of our mother planet.